So as we continue learning more about computers today, we're looking at extending software concepts. And this should be lesson number eight. So we're going to be looking at terms like integrated software, licensing agreements, free software, and system software. Now, at this point, you should know that when we talk about software, we are talking about programs that perform a specific function. This could be applications like WhatsApp, Facebook, anything like that. Um, it could also be a messaging service, you know, any of these things. So that is what we're referring to when we talk about software. Okay. Now, before the idea of a graphical user interface or GUIs, programs looked very different to the way they look now. And it was quite hard to learn, you know, how to use a new program. It is also very difficult to share data between these programs. So some advantages when it comes to integrated software. And when we talk about integrated software, we're talking about a software package. So here we have then a group of programs that are actually installed as one application or one program on your computer. So obviously some advantages would be the fact that separate packages have a similar interface. And let me just illustrate this. When you look at, and I'm going to open up Word, and I'm going to open up Microsoft PowerPoint, and then I'm going to open up Microsoft Excel as well, so you can see exactly what I mean. Now, when I use the Office package, it's sold as one piece of software. But have a look at this. Even though where I'm working in here is different, do you see that I've still got these tabs on top? And I've still got this ribbon area? Have a look at PowerPoint. Do I have the tabs on top and the ribbon area over here? Yes, I do. What about Word? Do I have tabs on top and my ribbon area over here? Yes, I do. So this is what we're talking about when we say that, yes, they are separate packages or separate pieces of software, but they have a similar interface. They are designed to share and exchange data. This is why I can take a Word document, put it into Excel. I can take an Excel spreadsheet, import it into Microsoft Word as well. The beauty of it is it is sold as a suite, and this is why they'll often talk about the Microsoft Office suite, a suite of programs. So you don't pay for the individual programs in that package. You just pay once for the complete package, which obviously means then you're going to be saving as well. Okay, now, very importantly, there's something called a licensing agreement. And I'm sure when you've installed something, whether it's an app on your phone or so, and you go next, next, next to get everything installed, there is a license agreement that comes up and you either click OK or you click I agree or things like that. What that actually means when you click or you select I agree, it's actually a legally binding contract between you as the user and the software company. So you are agreeing as to how to use this piece of software on your device. These license agreements are often termed EULAs or end user, because you are the end user, license agreement. Okay, so I know they make these things unnecessarily long, especially with iTunes. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what it is. So here, for example, uh, as part of the agreement, they say install, uh, sorry, installation and use rights. Before you use the software under a license, you must assign that license to one device. So this excerpt that's taken out of a license agreement means that this piece of software can only be installed on one computer. Um, and yeah, each one is fairly different. So here's a typical picture of your iTunes license agreement, and you literally have to scroll all the way down to the bottom. Um, and let's be honest, I don't think anybody really reads it. But for those who do, um, you have to go all the, all the way to the bottom before this usually comes up, and then you can click on I agree and move forward. Now, the only problem is that with you purchasing software, there is the issue of software piracy. Now, just understand this first. When we talk about software piracy, 
We're talking about the illegal installation, copying, and distribution of proprietary software. In other words, software that needs to be purchased. Most software now requires activating or registering online anyway in an attempt to crack down on software piracy. Please understand piracy. Software piracy is a crime and can result in hefty fines or in some cases even jail time. Now, as we continue, remember when you buy software, you are sold a license to use it on your computer only. All right. You are not the author of the software. You have not created it and therefore you do not own the copyright to that program. Now, with a network, and this is um, what some people will see when it comes to installing software, you can install it as a single user or multi-user, which means more people will be using this. So let's just understand the difference between a single user license and a multi-user license. When we talk about a single user license, we're just saying that you may only install one copy of the software and you are usually allowed to make one backup copy, right? So it's one PC, one backup, that's it. The multi-user or site license means that there can be an unrestricted number of installations within a company or organization. It is more expensive than the single license, but can you imagine having a company of 150 computers and all of them have to have... Um, let's say Microsoft Office, you can't be, buy, be buying licenses for each individual PC. So you buy a site license, also known as voluming or volume licensing, which is more expensive, but in the long run is cheaper. Furthermore, with software, you do get some free software. Okay. Um, but they divide it up into this freeware and shareware, which I just want to explain to you quickly. So when we talk about freeware or when you see freeware programs, it means that the piece of software or the program has all its functionality and it's completely free and can be used without any restrictions. You can copy it, you can distribute it, that's fine. They've got no issue with that. Shareware, however, is software that you can download for free, but you can only use it for a trial period and you have to pay to get the full version. So that's the difference between the two. We also get what we know as open source software. And I'll go a little bit into that. But here you can see a few examples of this type of software. Now when we talk about free software, there's also open source software. And I'm sure you've heard of this um, with some of the operating systems. Sometimes they talk about some of the um, cryptocurrencies whose coding is open source. That means that the program itself or the software may be freely used, modified is the big key here, distributed, but not sold. So you can't sell that, right? Um, examples are things like the Linux operating system, some of the Office suites like OpenOffice and LibreOffice, your Java programming and your SQL, or MySQL database system as well. So you've got your freeware, you've got your shareware, and then you've got your open source software. Just understand with open source software, because anyone can go and you know, download the software, modify the code, upload it again, there's no guarantee of the quality. There's often different versions. Um, you can generally only get it from the internet and there's no real support or documentation to go with that. So it has its advantages, but yeah, also a couple of disadvantages. Copyright, I think most of us know what is meant by our copyright, but we want to go through a few items since we are talking about the software. When we talk about copyright, this refers to the legal right to make copies, publish, and sell. Now, remember, if you're not the author, you cannot do this. Okay? The intellectual property, this is a broader concept. It recognizes the ownership of the person that came up with the original idea or thought. And then you get your creative commons, which is really a non-profit organization that promotes the sharing and free use of knowledge and products legally. So there is a site actually called the Creative Commons where people go and they share ideas, they share, um, you know, whether it be programs or videos or whatever the case may be. And the whole idea is that people come together to be able to share what they have and everyone can benefit. Now, there are a few conditions for that, um, but it still remains absolutely free. 
then back to your desktop, your Windows operating system or whichever operating system you have. There are very important programs that are built into the operating system called utility programs. And their job is to perform general housekeeping of your computer. So for example, you have compression software. And an example is WinZip. So what is this used for? I mean, what, when we talk about compressing, we're talking about making something smaller. So here, for example, you have a document and the document is 1037 kilobytes in size. I can then zip that or compress that. It doesn't damage the file. It doesn't change anything in the contents of the file, but it makes it smaller. Now, why would I use this? Maybe I'm going to send an email with an attachment and it's a little bit too big. I can compress the file, send it along in the email, and um, when the person gets it, they can unzip that. So I just want to show you this quickly, maybe just as an example. And I'm going to go um, to my desktop. And you can see any folder. If I've got this folder, I can right click on it. And if I go send to... There's my compressed zip folder, and it will compress that folder, create a new folder, and ask me to give it a name. Okay, so that's the compression folder. Then I've got my backup utilities as well. So this is where I'm backing up my files regularly, and why would I be doing that? Um, the reason I'm going to do that is because files can be accidentally deleted or overwritten, Files can become corrupt. Um, this can happen by not shutting down the PC correctly. Um, the PC could have a power failure. You could have a virus on it, you know, anything like that. So you want to practice uh, good backup policies as well. Okay. Then to continue with our utility programs, again, like I said, they are there to perform general housekeeping. So please keep that in mind because these are programs that are built into the operating system itself right and then the last item we have are drivers now this is not somebody who drives your car or the minibus or anything like that no 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 remember we are talking about programs so every piece of hardware whether it's a flash drive or a printer anything like that is controlled by a driver so what does this driver do well the driver is software in other words it's a program that allows your computer to communicate with hardware or devices. So here we have a typical example. We have a printer, flash drive, mouse, network card, and a CD or DVD drive. And here we have the user. So the user then connects this up to the, whether it's desktop or laptop, um, it will then see which operating system is on there. The operating system picks up that there is a piece of hardware and then you have device drivers that will actually tell the operating system exactly what to do with that piece of hardware. So you, the correct device driver for the piece of hardware is crucial because this is the communication means between the operating system and the printer. Okay, and folks, that is the end of our extended software concepts. We've now gone a bit further into... Um, what software is and the different types of software out there. So I hope you are grasping this, you understand it. And if you have any questions, just leave that in the comments for me.